Jesus said, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. So on behalf of Pat's family, can I welcome you here this afternoon as we meet to celebrate her life and to give thanks for the love and the laughter that she shared with those closest to her. As we gather in the midst of grief, God is with us. So we come both to mourn and to celebrate Pat's life. Today we take the time to acknowledge the shock that death brings, the time and the space that we need to say goodbye, and to spend some time remembering all that was good at work in the years that it was given to Pat to share with us. And then from today we seem to find some, seek to find some measure of healing and peace to enable that journey of grief to move on. On the journey of grief, you encounter so many different emotions. At some points, you may feel numb or angry, helpless or lost. Those who grieve need the time and the space, both to mourn and to remember. At some points, that will mean silence, quiet, and space to be alone. And at other times, it will mean company, story, memories, and conversation. There is no right or wrong way to feel when someone dies. So in a moment of quiet, let's acknowledge our feelings as we bow our heads for our opening prayer. God, in the midst of vulnerability and loss, may we hold one another in love. Strengthen us and comfort us. Enable our tears. Hear our sighs. Help us to live through our doubt. Teach us the truth that the darkness has never overcome the light of your love. Help us to care for each other and to love each other through this grief. Amen. I think Susan and Victoria are going to come and share some of their memories of their nun. My nan was the best nan ever. I know everyone says it about the nan, but to me she really, really was. If I was asked to describe my nan, then I would say a hard way, love a mother and grandmother, who was always there for her children, grandchildren and family, no matter what. She was quiet, well-dressed, well-mannered, proud, a very private person, 
but also very stubborn. <laughs> you know, if you went to Nan's, you'd be well fed in good company, and she knew how to give a good party. She was a well-known figure in the town in the ACs. Bobby, she would the wool store, the fish man, all the stalls knew her, as did the greedy pig cafe owners, where she would take us all for doorstop toast and the cream soda or nick a bottle of glory after shopping. <laughs> Retirement didn't stop my nan. She had a bigger social life than her grandchildren. There was always a pensioners out on turkey and tinsel weekend happening. Her weekly Wednesday afternoons and Saturday morning meetups with her sisters and my nin took them everywhere their bus and rail pass allowed. Whenever it was town, I knew this included solitaire and our data because we'd be in there for hours. Like my nin, my aunties and uncles, Nan was very accepting of everyone no matter what creed. Nin, Auntie Agnes and Auntie Owen, and Nan would often call in to see my dad at work in the case and and have a tipple in the corner on a Wednesday afternoon. A gay bar in the 80s and 90s. Nan didn't care what or who you were, as long as you were kind, honest and respectful. When I was in primary school, I spent most weekends at Nan's. So every Monday when we had to write what we did over the weekends, I did exactly that. Till one time I got a fierce warning from Nan. I wasn't to write exactly what happened, as she didn't appreciate being the subject a topic of conversation in the staff room about her going to Grafton. <laughs> Nan worked at the craft for years and made lots of great friendships there. If there was ever a party or a day out, she always put me on the list and we had some good times with the craft family. We were all so lucky to go on a family holiday with Nan to Butlands. But John and I snuck out one morning to the fair, but it was too early. And we didn't realise the drop on the outside was a lot higher than the one on the inside. So we knocked on the door only for Nan to open it without her glasses and say, oh, I love them, sorry, but they're not up yet. And when it was us, she pulled us in and gave us a hit, hit around the ear for being stupid. <sighs> there was a time when I was lucky enough in my life to live with my Nan. And although she may not think it was lucky and I annoyed her when I left the cans of coke everywhere, she not only opened up her home to me, but also my friends. We would often congregate in the dining room with our lunch, and she'd always pretend we were under a feast, but she loved it, really. One story she always told people was the time I called her from uni and asked if a couple of friends could stay over as we were going to Creamfields. She nearly had a heart attack when ten of us came, but she accommodated us all. Even when one of my friends slipped in the shower, tried to grab the shower curtain and pulled the rail, the tiles off the wall, scratched the enamel on the bath and pulled the bath away from the wall and caused a leak to the bottom toilet. The only thing my aunt said was, as long as she's OK. And when it came back to sending us all off with a cuddle and a kiss and a pack lunch, that was Nan all over. <sighs> Nan was never ill. and was independent right up to when she had a first stroke five years ago. Even at 70 years of age, she travelled to Australia for John and Kate's wedding and then continued to Perth with Auntie Agnes to see all her other relatives. But that's another story in itself. I can never watch the crown Midsummer Murders or Harpies again. I miss Nan immensely and I feel lucky I was her first grandchild. Nan showed me unconditional love and I hope she felt the same back from me. She is now reunited with Nin. Granddad and the brothers Tommy, Uncle Bob, Uncle Jim, and a great granddaughter Paisley. And I bet they're all loving having a bath with them, as the gap that is left when she is not around is bigger than the black hole itself. I love you, Nan, and I'll miss you. And until I get to feel your arms again, good night and God bless. Victoria can show some memories. Is that yeah? Man, the day I was born, you have always been by my side, and I'm absolutely heartbroken standing here today. <laughs> I 
can still picture you picking me up as a child and sitting me on the worktop and we both look out the window waiting for my mum to come home from work. I'll miss the little things like calling in for a cover and a chat, going shopping, sleeping over. And staying in yours, especially when you turn your famous results and fruit cake. You, me mum and me were like the three musketeers. I have and always will have the best memories of our holidays together. Going in the fair or just going down to the beach to build sand castles. <laughs> Man, you had a heart of gold and welcoming to people with open arms. I'm going to miss you so much. You was and always will be the best man anyone could wish for. Sweet dreams, God bless and good night. That was from Breckfield Road originally. She was one of eight children. And she had memories of her dad standing on the corner waiting for them all, making sure they weren't home late. She was, as you've heard, a very hard working all her life. Um, she was a very strong person who just got on with things. I'm told the only, she, only thing she used to moan about was John's measures of gin. <laughs> working life finished at the craft, but it didn't start there. It was Vernon's Pools, Jacob's, Laundrette, the Delco as well on the way through. And you've heard what a real family person she was and what the family meant to her. She had four children. She was a brilliant mum. Uh, where she was like a best mate. They couldn't have asked for a better mum. And she looked after them, and they looked after her as well. She loved her knitting. Uh, everyone got a, something knitted at Christmas, a jumper or something else. And she loved reading, and as you've heard, the murder mysteries as well. Always active, always out and about, with a mum, with her sisters. Anywhere the bus pass would take them, as long as there was a scampy lunch waiting for them when they got there. Pensioners clubs, travelling to Australia, Malta, the caravan in Wales, the mystery tours with the friends from work, that sense of adventure that meant so much to her. So hard when her stroke um, affected that five years ago with her independence and the ability to knit. But she got on with it, as she always did. She accepted everyone. She was strong, loving, caring, sociable and fun to be with. And she loved having a laugh right up to the end. The family have asked me to say thank you to everyone for the support and for the carers who cared for her so well when she needed it. Can listen now to a piece of music, I'll See You Again by Westlife.
I'm going to read the 23rd Psalm, very ancient words, which have been read at funeral services for many centuries. The Lord is my shepherd, therefore can I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He shall refresh my soul and guide me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup shall be full. Surely goodness and loving mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The three things from that psalm that um, I think are helpful. The first is that promise of peace, the green pastures and still waters that the author speaks of. And that speaks to us of the hope that when someone has died, that somehow on the other side of death there is that place of peace, where love has triumphed over death. And that for Pat, there's a place of healing, of restoration, of reunion. The second, for those left behind, um, that very evocative image, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Grief can feel like that, a place of darkness, of, uh, where everything is overwhelming and closing in a place where it's hard to see hope and light. And yet, to avoid that pain, to avoid the crying, to avoid the grieving, isn't a healthy thing either. Grief comes with our emotions. We have to cry, we have to mourn, we have to be sorry at the loss we suffer because of the love that we shared when we had the person with us. But it comes with a promise as well that even when we're in that dark place, even when we're mourning and crying, Yet somehow love is still with us. For, God, for me, it's God's promise to be with us in that place, as well as those who care for us and around us. And that brings me on to the third thing. A table spread in the presence of those who trouble me, a head anointed and a cup full. There's a sense in which we find peace when we're with other people, to share those memories, to tell the stories, to support one another to walk with each other on this painful journey that we're on, to remember the things about Pat that made you smile, that made you laugh. And yes, they might make, bring a smile and a tear at the same time. So as you go forward from this place, go with the hope that somehow death is not the end and that love it triumphs over that, knowing that even when things are at their darkest, there is still the light of hope and supporting each other as you walk this journey together. I'm going to read the poem now that's printed inside your order of service called She Is Gone. You can shed tears that she is gone, or you can smile because she has lived. You can close your eyes and pray that she will come back, or you can open your eyes and see all that she has left. Your heart can be empty because you can't see her, or you can be full of the love that you shared. You can turn your back on tomorrow and live yesterday. Or you can be happy for tomorrow because of yesterday. You can remember her and only that she has gone. Or you can cherish her memory and let it live on. You can cry and close your mind, be empty and turn your back. Or you can do what she would want. Smile, open your eyes, love and go on. I'm going to take a few moments now of quiet to reflect, to pray, to remember Pat, to think of her family as well. Let's bow our heads for a time of prayer. So let's remember Pat. As you think of her, picture her in your mind's eye. Remember the life that you shared. Remember the sunshine and the rain, the laughter and the tears. Everything that made Pat unique and that continues to keep her special for you now. So God our Father, we thank you now for all of Pat's life, all these memories of love and joy. We thank you for the rest that she now enjoys. We thank you for giving it to us, and we thank you for the glory we shall share together. 
Now give us the strength and courage to leave her in your care, reunited with her mum and dad, Eva and Joe, with the brothers Bob, Thomas and Jimmy, with the granddaughter Paisley, through Jesus our Lord. Amen. Lord, we pray for those who mourn, for John and Bernie, Alwyn and Paul, for Jeanette, for Keith and Carol, for all of Pat's grandchildren and great-grandchildren, for Alwyn, Agnes, Arthur and Glyn, and the wider family circle, for friends and neighbours. Be gentle with them in their grief. Show them the depths of your love, a glimpse of the kingdom of heaven. Spare them the torment of guilt and despair, and be with them as they weep. Amen. If you'd like to join in with the Lord's Prayer as we say that together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. I'm going to read a poem now by Ruth Burgess. To love someone is to risk the pain of parting, but not to love is to never have lived. The grief which we experience is the honouring of love. So if you'd like to stand. So let us now, in a quiet moment, make our farewell to Pat as we commend her to the mercy of God, our Maker and Redeemer. So, Pat, we send you forth upon your journey from this world, set free in the love of God, the life-giver, in the compassion of Jesus who walks with you, in the power of God's Spirit who enfolds you and us, here and now. Amen. We've entrusted our sister Pat to God's mercy, and we now commit her body to be cremated, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, in sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our frail bodies, that they may be conformed to his glorious body, who died, was buried, and rose again for us. To him be glory forever. Amen. So may God give you his comfort and his peace, his light and his joy, in this world and the next, and the blessing of God Almighty. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you and with all whom you love, today and always. Amen.
for the times that you've given me. The memories are all in my mind. And now that we've come to the end of our rainbow, there's something. Three times. 